Chapter 6 The Magic of Love Love had been recognised in the teaching engraved on the Sphinx. Love is a secret of life. In the caves of the Anchorites near Mount Sinai, love with wisdom is the secret of life is engraved. And again at the doorway of the great rock near Dyer Petre is written, The torch of life is fed by the oil of love. Dr. Voronoff tells us that it is love that causes the humble glowworm to burn, burn so brightly. And he reminds us of Victor Hugo's parting advice to his grandson, George's. Quote, love, seek for love. Love makes better men. You must love, my son. Love well all your life. Unquote. Love can bring out the magic in your mind, and it can bring out the magic in anyone with whom you come in contact. It was Barry who said, That little bit more, how much it is. Why cannot we love people more, show our love, help more, give more? Say to yourself again and again, I will try always to be in love. In love with everything. When you love life, you are able to say, This is my happy day. The so-called prosaic life is dull no longer when you are in love. You are a spirit on a sparkling star. The commonplace becomes beautiful and the beautiful of a thousand times more lovely. Oh, my dear, isn't it lovely? The words may be applied to a single buttercup of the twenty million in one field a golden sunbeam, a cathedral, a May morning, a blackbird's song, or a piece of bread and cheese, the music of a moth fluttering against the window, a waterfall, a violin. The world is full of lovely things. If you are content to live and die without having looked at the colour of the earth, or striving to give pleasure, you do not deserve to be alive in this magic, magnificent world. A famous Stoic sage commanded, Love everything that happens to you. I love the things I am doing. I love going on the stage to perform magic or read somebody's mind. I love going before the television cameras. Yes, I mean it. And I love writing this book. I hope you will love reading it. I love every minute of every day. Loving should be a real part of your life. You can adapt yourself to this new way of facing things, if you determine to do so. Love can lift you to the highest dimension, and that is where you must get. I love my audiences everywhere. The car I drive, my home, my family, my tropical fish, my poodles. I love the mountains, museums, music and flowers. The sky is never so blue. The birds never sing so sweetly. Our friends are never so gracious as when you are filled with love. Love raises you to heights otherwise quite impossible, where magic can be done almost instantly. It is a psychological law that you cannot separate yourself from your own kind. The most sacred truth is violated when you consider yourself not one with your fellow man. History suggests the idea was born 5,000 years ago, but in fact, a fact which experience proves. If you want magic to come, just throw away your old attitudes and beliefs. Throw them overboard at once. Love is an all-important law of magic. See no difference between ant and angel, between white and coloured people. Look at the ocean and not the wave. We are all a part of the same. All is one. Everything is energy. Every worm is a brother of the Nazarene. This spirit of all-embracing love is the outcome of the understanding that all living things, from man down to the earthworm, are subject to the same laws and conditions of existence. As I am, so are they. As they are, so am I. One should identify oneself with all that lives and should not kill or hurt any living being. 
the Buddhists calls this love metta. It is that innermost wish that all living beings, without exception, may be happy, free from pain and grief. We should overflow with love, embracing the love, the low and the high, the ugly and the beautiful, the sinful and the virtuous alike. This is possible only to one who adopts the right attitude. And unless you perfect yourself and attain this right attitude, all attempts at magic are fruitless. Because all this sort of thing comes under the heading of purification, i.e. raising your vibration. To work magic and to keep on working magic, you must have a loving heart. The more you can develop this disposition in yourself, the more you will realize your ambitions. You will have wonderful power. Magic and miracles are not a part of your life at the moment, but soon, if you really follow all that I am saying, you will be able to receive and achieve your wildest dreams. The light which shines in your aura is conditioned by the qualities of your character. The better and purer you are, the higher your vibration, the greater your light. And depending on its brilliance is whether or not you can really work wonders. The only passport required for entrance into this world of magic is an earnest desire to know. And I am giving you that knowledge. It means persistence of you on your part, of course. All the qualifications to work magic are not easy of attainment, but this much is certain. They can be attained. If you are determined not to be beaten, to never give up. The way will unfold step by step as you read this book. March on boldly. Be patient. Be courageous. Be regular in your meditation. Be calm and love, no matter what befalls you. The end of wisdom is freedom. All will be yours when you are wise to all this. The end of knowledge is love. Love is a conquering force. Love is the magic key that opens any door. Cultivate love each day, every day, and every moment. You must awaken this dormant power, the primary principle, which is in your mind and back of magic phenomena. Your very life can be practical demonstration of the reality of magic. Once one, perchance, in thousands of men strives for perfection. One, perchance, among those striving knows how to perform magic. The doubting self goes to destruction. There must be self-control, self-discipline. Discipline, thought and control. Do you love the work you are doing? Here is a story that illustrates what I mean. How long have you been at this job that you're in such a hurry? Said one of the characters in an old road mender in a book by Michael Fairless. Four months, he replied. Seen better days? Never, he said emphatically. Mean to say you're like cracking these blamed, blamed stones to fill all oils some other fools made? He nodded assent. Well, that beats everything. Now I've seen better days. Worked in a big brewery over near Maidstone, a town that, and something doing. And now, here I am, hammering me art out on these blasted stones for a bit of bread and a pipe of backy once a week. It ain't good enough. Here you have two men doing the same job, but they are different men. One is happy and loves his work, the other complains and is discontented. They have different attitudes, and you know which of those two could work magic, if you wanted to. Do you love your neighbour, however poor? Here is another story. It is of two very poor women who lived in a slum alley. One had love in her heart, but the other was a negative type. The two back doors of these people used to face each other, and a negative woman, when she was swilling out the yard one day, got a brush and brushed the water for all she was worth in big splashes into the other woman's doorway. Her steps were wet, and it went into the room. She did not like the woman, or was jealous of her for some reason, and she showed her spite in this unlikely, unkindly manner. What did the neighbour do? Did she rave at the woman for her beastly low-down trick? Did she bellow back at her horrid names? 
No, she was a positive woman and had love in her heart. She lived life happily, and there she sat in her little room, letting the woman do as she pleased, and all the while she held it the thought, Bless you, bless you. There came a big breeze later, and the woman's washing was hanging and blowing about in the line. The clothes prop was none too safe in the fierce gusts, and suddenly a mighty wind blew the thing down. The little woman had been, who had been treated so unkindly could see what was about to happen, and she ran out of the room where she was sitting, and just caught the prop in time to save her neighbour's clean washing from falling into the wet yard which she had just been swilling. When the negative unkind woman saw how good her neighbour had been after the horrid thing which she had done to her, she was amazed. She could not believe her eyes, but that little love action changed her from a bad woman into a good one. The two women became wonderful friends. You see, the woman with love in her heart was too big to be hurt. If a man hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. If a man hits you and you hit back, it shows that you know no more about love than the other man. I have to interject here. Being a trained martial arts for years, I never initiate force. But self-defense, if someone hits you, you have to use self-defense. And actually I read one time that turn the other cheek has been grossly misinterpreted by the church. Turn the other cheek actually meant in Roman times that you were insulting the other person. So you have to draw a line between self-defense. If someone beats up your wife, your kids, where do you draw the line? If a person steals your coat, give him the other coat also. Say, you have wanted this of me, take it and let me help you still more. Let me comfort you. That thing has happened as a test to see how much love you have in your heart for humanity. Well, you can use your own discernment there now. The way that you will meet that experience will prove absolutely whether you understand the meaning of love or not. You have to love, wish everyone the best, but you don't have to like them. Because every an awful lot of toxic negative people in this world will lower and kill your vibration. But you wish them well, obviously. And love them, wish the best for them, bless them. But you cannot be a dormant for other people's bad emotions and let people walk all over you. That kills you inside at some level. If you have placed yourself under the law of love, you know that all is well. You have acquired the good disposition. You know that man is the own, is only your brother. Yes, fair enough. They all is one. And it is really your brother you are giving the thought to. If you retaliate, if you do what he did, it shows that you do not know anything more about working magic than he does. Say, perhaps you need my other coat. What prompted you to steal? You may be astounded at the story you get from that man. Take your love test victoriously. It is the mind that will work magic. Let people try hard to hurt you. Yeah, right. Let them try hard to get you into a temper. Let them try hard to, to make you pass an adverse criticism about some aspect of life. But let it be of no use. Never complain. Get rid of your lower self and put your greater self in its place. Accept life. Love everything that happens to you because it gives you a chance to prove yourself. It gives you a chance to bring out the magic in your mind. Let me tell you the charming story of a girl of 13 who had to bring up a family and run a home. Then she fell ill. Worn out, she lay in hospital and a church worker visited her in the ward. One of the first questions he asked the little girl as she lay dying was, Have you been confirmed? The little girl said no. Then the church wor worker asked, What are you going to say to God when you have to tell him that? The child's eyes had a peace too deep to be disturbed. And she said simply, I, I shall show him my hands. See, there's another thread running there as well. You cannot let other people's religious beliefs manipulate your situation. Trying to work on guilt, what is God going to say to you? Should ask guilt straight away. Anyway, her hands, poor child, were her proof of love. She had lived a life of unselfishness and love. She had given all that was good in herself, regardless of her health to others. This love is without selection or exclusion. Well, you see, 
you have the airplane story mask. You're no good to your young child on your lap. If you don't put your oxygen mask on first in an airplane, you die, and then your child dies too. See, the very, very strong experiment has to be used in these pages, although this book is pretty good, like, overall. Great book, actually. If you love a few friends and exclude unpleasant people, or those whom you look upon as enemies, then you do not get the idea of what I mean by love. Love is not only a brotherly feeling, but a principle. It is principle. I am driving into you all the time. You must live to principle if you would attempt feats of magic. The love I mean is the dynamics of fusing of every living being, excluding none whatsoever. If your intentions are intense enough, loving actions will follow automatically. Yes, yes, yes. But never tolerate toxic negative people. Cut them out of your life. Because like energy vampires, they'll suck you down, sink you down to their level. Always try to be around and acquaint to people of a similar and a higher vibration that lift you up. Pure love must embrace all living beings everywhere and all creatures. And we are striving for purity. Remember the fireworkers? Love is one of the most significant things in life. Yet somehow most of us are afraid to show it. You may say you want to make a demonstration of affection, but you never get around to it. You want to, but you can't. Let yourself go. These three words should be underlined in your mind. Let yourself go. If you want to work magic, and if you want to bring out the magic in somebody else, if you fail to express love, then you restrain your actions and become negative at once, completely without magnetism. You must have active love in your life. Age does not matter. When you are a hundred, you will still have the same feelings inside of you, still desire to love and be loved. You will get a glowing reaction from your friends, your relations, the old and lonely and the very young. Love can be defined in one word, giving. Give of yourself with sincerity and deep feeling. Think of Christmas. What a time it is for giving. Love shines in the paper decorations hanging from the ceiling. Love shines in the coloured electric lights festooned around the Christmas tree. Two thousand years ago in a lowly stable in Bethlehem, a divine child was born. No, hold on, we were all, we were every single one of us, our divine children. All with the same spark inside all of us. Turning the world into a fairyland for one day. Well, every day is a fairyland. It is better than millions of diamonds to be loved by children, to see the stars in their eyes, hear the music of their laughter. Christmas is a magic time. It is made magic through a world in love. For a little while it changes everybody. People laugh and love again in the infectious gaiety of the greatest festival of all time. That is love. The love that transfigured a family at Bethlehem. You should meditate on love. According to the Buddhist method, training oneself comes first. They strive for individual perfection before all else. From trained minds comes right thoughts, right actions and right words. The Buddhists call this metta, brackets loving kindness. They say mentally, may I be well and happy. And after a while they extend it to all others, saying, may all beings of the universe be well and happy. They mean it and they feel it. They send out these thoughts of metta before they go to sleep. They maintain these thoughts of metta, i.e. loving kindness, and they have serene, peaceful and successful lives. Well, every person's definition of success is different. There is great poise and serenity in their faces, in their whole personality. The Buddhist works on himself first. When they meditate on love, they meditate on love of self first. The self... Yeah self the higher self quantum universe connection your right brain that runs controls all your body a whole lot different personality to you left brain and it can take years to get to know this different personality that runs your body and then that acquaints the super conscious through years of meditation study solitude Killing your your own demons, etc., etc., releasing blocks. There's a whole world of stuff in this. Like. 
but yes, work on yourself first. By having pure love as they define it, for self, higher self, selfish tendencies, hatred, anger become diminished. Mm, yeah. They believe that unless they themselves possess metta within, they cannot share, they cannot radiate, they cannot send this metta to others. According to Buddhism, as I have said before, self-love comes first. If a person cannot help himself well, they say they cannot help others well. Metta is much more than ordinary affection. It means a great deal more than loving kindness, really. Metta is much higher. To obtain metta, you reach the very highest plane of consciousness. And isn't that what we must all do? In meditation, they do not merely think about it. They become it. Loving kindness can be maintained towards a person with whom you are annoyed. This is how annoyance with him can be removed. Yes, if someone is annoying you, they say it's a reflection, a mirror reflection of something inside you. There's a great Hopono Ono technique for this. And you think of the situation of the person and you repeat over and over, Thank you. I love you. I apologize. Please forgive me. And you're accessing universal aspects of the equation in this. A Buddhist thoughts in meditation go something like this. May all the breathing things, all beings, all persons be freed from distress and anxiety and may they guide themselves to bliss. May all creatures in the eastern direction be freed from distress and may they guide themselves to bliss. And they do the other four directions as well. People have said to me, should we love snakes? Should we love mice? In the world of magic, we aim at the highest form of love, and I say yes. Unconditional love, actually, sure, means unconditional, no conditions. But self-defense has to kick into it. Love is the best state of heart in the world, and the state that will bring the magic out of your mind and out of the minds of those with whom you come in contact. All people in all nations should live on the principle of no hate, no fear, no greed. The prelude to this is that everybody and every nation begins a new quality of living now. Then we shall be able to say, Behold how these nations love one another. Watch the effect of love upon a person. Sound the trumpets, beat the drums, and see the countenance brighten and the glowing light of satisfaction come into their eyes. Dogs, horses, cats, even birds respond to love and rebel at blame or censure. Any gardener knows that flowers you love to tend, even bless, will bloom better and last far longer than those you are not interested in. And he knows that flowers tended, without thought and feeling, even sometimes cursed, will quickly hang their heads and die and wither. It is the same with objects. A man can walk into an engine room and trouble starts at once. Things go wrong. It would seem that even things have likes and dislikes. An engineer who loves his machine can talk to his engine, polish it, call it old girl, generally sympathize with it, in fact, and it is receptive at once. It works for such a personality. The magic of love does the trick. It has been scientifically proved that metal atoms can become tired. <laughs> Gold, silver, zinc, copper, iron. These responsive atoms will cooperate or not, according to the type of personality dealing with them. Actually, quantum science and science studies have proved that metals can be changed physically under the microscope or whatever from per people's vibrations acting on them. So we have a scientific proof, yes, of this, yeah. Where there is love, there is communication. It is as though things know your thoughts and how you feel towards them. The same thing happens with water and chemicals. They have their likes and dislikes, their attractions and repulsions, but love is the magic that can put things right. The magic that will get you what you want. Have you never tried it on some car? It goes wrong, you swear, you cannot get it to go. Somebody comes along and gives you a hand, probably someone who hasn't got a car and would like one. 
running like yours perhaps they have only to look at it and the trouble becomes right love what a magical word it is how do you feel when you want to love everybody and everything you feel joyful free open-minded happy with love life is very sweet on this earth with its daffodils in the springtime hans christian anderson understood love to put it in a nutshell here is his story there was an old man who had a horse he thought it would be best if he sold the horse or exchanged it for something more useful but what his wife said you will know best old man so he exchanged it for a cow then he exchanged the cow for a sheep coming across a, ma across a man with a goose under his arm he exchanged the sheep for a goose soon afterwards he exchanged the goose for a fowl but when he came across an ostler with his sack of rotten apples he exchanged the fowl for the rotten apples the old man related the story of his exchange to someone who said assuredly well your old woman will give it to you when you get home but he answered she will kiss me and say what the old man does is always right when he got home he told his wife how he exchanged the horse for a cow heaven be thanked she says how he exchanged the cow for a sheep ah better still she said but i exchanged the sheep for a goose you were always thinking of something to give me pleasure she continued and when he told her how he gave away the goose for a fowl she complimented him on the good exchange but i exchanged the fowl for a sack of shriveled apples think of it what would the, an ordinary woman say how would she feel about it i am afraid she would be in a violent temper certainly she would not love him for it but hans anderson makes his character exclaim most excitedly i must positively kiss you for that my dear good husband here is the true story of a man who knew the meaning of love when a car plunged into the water at cardiff docks this young man made a perfect dive brought the diver ashore driver ashore then hurried away before anyone could speak to him a marvellous dive said onlookers but they never knew how wonderful till it was discovered that the young man william hunter of cardiff had lost an arm and a leg in an accident when he was thirteen it seems impossible that he could have done such a thing but where there is love there is magic george sanders the famous film star had been very ill and nobody seemed to be getting him right then he met a man who summed up his trouble at once he was an intelligent man the secret of renewed health was uttered by him in one word love love everybody he said it is the only solution george sanders looked amazed he was flabbergasted i know it's hard said the man but you must make the effort and he did and it is in the teaching of the buddha without fire and sword buddhism has found its way into the hearts of millions and millions of beings from history we know that since the time of the buddha up to this day not a single drop of blood has been shed in the name of the buddha this is a big thing to say but it is true and that is how love works I am not trying to make everyone a Buddhist, but I am merely giving you the facts of love in these people, because love is what we are talking about. Love is what we must have in our lives if we are going to bring out the magic in our minds. To work magic you have got to be a little more kind, a little more sympathetic, you have got to have a little more belief in the other fellow, a little more patience, and a little more of what the great psychologist called love. Somebody said to me the other day, I've got to leave here for it. After living there all these years, I've got to, I've got a job in Birmingham, and I've got to go there and live there. Do you think I shall like Birmingham? I mean the people. What did you think of Hereford? What did you think of the people there? I asked. Oh, Hereford's a lovely city, but rotten people. I don't like them at all. I said, then you won't like Birmingham either. You won't like the people there. He looked disappointed. But don't you see, it was his attitude. Such a man would not pe like people anywhere he went. He was the common denominator. He did not know the meaning of love. The very stones of Paris speak of love. In Paris there is no pretense that love is unimportant or unworthy. They know it for what it is. The one big thing that lifts man above the brute and shows him the reflection of the stars even in the gutter. Love gives you a momentarily glimpse of something rarer, finer, more poetic. If you don't love now a human, your environment, your life, you might well begin to learn. 
Not the love that any fool can feel when he stops his care in a bluebell wood on a Sunday morning in May, but that which sustains you when the sun isn't shining, and the bluebells are dead, and you can't afford a car any longer, and you're too ill to drive it if you could. Not a place in your heart anywhere for love? I think love is the only true value, whether it is for someone or for something. You may work hard and do everything else that is necessary to perform magic, but without love you cannot reach the fourth dimension. You cannot become magnetic. You cannot achieve success or attract that jaguar, that motor yacht, that beautiful house you have always wanted. Perhaps it doesn't make sense to you that one has to do so many things and believe so many things in order to bring out the magic in your mind, but it is true. Better get out your exercise book and write it in a hundred times. I must not be small-minded. The world need ma needs magic. The world needs love. You can be the best of all magicians if you follow what I say. Don't turn your back on anything. Make up your mind and that you are going to get everything in the world you want easily, quickly, by magic. I am continually getting the things I want and I can say that life is wonderful. When I started this book, when I got the idea of writing it, I just could not see how in the world I would ever have time to do it. But the way opened, and the way will always open if you want the thing intensely enough, and are prepared to make sacrifices. I said a little while ago that you have to become as little children. The poet Francis Thompson says, quote, Know you what it is to be a child. It is to believe in love, to believe in loveliness, to believe in belief. Unquote. One of the finest examples of love is the moving and heroic story of Dr. David Spencer, who gave a comparative stranger one of his kidneys to try and save his life. He was Dr. Ian Clark. He took over his patients, and the glowing accounts they gave of Clark made him begin to envy him. Everyone sang his praises, and he began to hate him, hate him, hate him. But when he met Dr. Ian Clark, he lost some of the jealousy. His ideas changed. He realised all that the patients had been saying was true and he agreed with them. Dr. David Spencer and Dr. Ian Clark talked together for hours and they began to look up to him and admire him tremendously. It does not alter the fact that this heroic man made the sick doctor a gift of one of his kidneys at the time when he hated him. He did it to save the life of a stranger. Have you ever heard of such an astonishing thing? Wonderful, isn't it? Hope died and flickered away, but this man's great demonstration of love will never die. Would you risk your life to save a colleague? To save a stranger? To save someone you disliked? I think it is, it is an, a splendid example of love. Love can be a poem like the noblest monument ever raised by a man to his beloved, the beautiful Taj Mahal of Agra. The Emperor Shah of Yehan built for his adored Mumsa this monument of loving devotion. So beautiful that rough hewn men have cried when they first beheld its loveliness. This flame that it called love can lead us to the stars, or it can lead us to the scaffold. It depends on ourselves. Some of us do not think about it at all, yet a touch of romance could make the situation magic. It is not easy to love. We must ask our subconscious for guidance. We may be called upon to apply the law of forgiveness and wipe out the past. Never an easy thing to do. We may be told to forgive all who have wronged us, through thought, word and deed. Nurse Cavill put it this way, I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. Fair enough, but like a parasite or parasites that live inside your body, they're symbiotic. They live and thrive on your living. In all the love in the world, you have to be practical, pragmatic, and cleanse them out of your system. There's different levels to this, don't get me wrong, Mac. Is there somebody who dislikes you, somebody you meet every day, someone who guts you hate? Well, if he behaves like a bore, it's almost certain he's afraid. He has a negative attitude to life. He may have a lot of worries and disappointments that made him a little sour. But there is some good in him somewhere. Try to find it. 
Don't let his behaviour bother you. Be extra kind. Yes, there's also another angle on this. Bless to see him, bless his situation. Ask the universe to bless him, etc. Wish him well. But cut him out of your life because he's toxic enough. He has his own path to pave. And you will drain yourself trying to raise him because they're not ready for it. Maybe down the line he'll come back into your life again, he or she. But take it from me, that's my angle. A Stockholm doctor once tried out a very interesting experiment. He took photos of human faces and found that if he superimposed 14 or more photos on top of each other, the resulting common face was always beautiful. He tried again and again, but it always worked out the same. Something beautiful was there. And that is how you should look at people. All the people you meet or see during the day, mix them up and know that there is something good there somewhere. Do you greet today buoyantly, filled with the thought of what this day may enable you to do for another's sake, to lessen pain, to impart happiness, to help with all the means that you have at your disposal, filled with love and self-forgetfulness? Suppose then you start your day by saying, I send a blessing to everyone I meet today, to each one I speak to, to each one on whom my glance rests. What a wonderful beginning to start your day like this is to understand the fourth dimension of kindness all right. Yes, this is a great idea. Personally, myself, every night when I go to bed, I have a little green, little stone. And I give thanks to the universe and I name ten different things, minimum ten different things, during the day that I am grateful for. And in the morning then, before I get out of bed, I thank the universe for the magnificent outcome of the day ahead, of certain situations, whatever lies ahead. In other words, I'm asking the universe for its blessing in what lies ahead. And then grateful at night, and also grateful in the morning, that what lies ahead is going to be blessed, you understand? Stage people are well known for their spirit and comradeship. Whatever show you belong to, you work together as a team. You are like a big happy family. You leave one theatre and go to the other, and everyone treats you with the same brotherly or sisterly feeling. Instantly you are welcomed usually called by your first name, with a deer attached for warmth and chumminess. It doesn't happen outside the theatre, only when there is a war on, or a long spell of deep snow. Then everyone becomes friendly, everyone is to help out to help each other. But one does, does not see this sort of behaviour in ordinary times. On some occasions I ask the audience to participate. Would say, two ladies and two gentlemen come up to the stage to take part in this next act of magic, please? A shy young lady steps up, or is it nervousness? I put her at ease, or try to. What's your name, dear? She speaks, speaks very quietly. Gypsy. A little louder, dear, please. Gypsy. Is it really? She nods. That's very pretty. Now would you mind picking out an envelope, dear? She does so. I hope you will be very lucky, I say. And so on. By now she has lost her shyness. She has melted to the warmth of that one little word, dear. Dear is an expression of love for humanity, a psychological touch that works magic. You get cooperation at once, and she gets a cheer from the audience. The other day a woman said of a man, If he calls me dear, I'll smack his face. Never, never in a thousand years could such a person work magic. 